YXK in the Shell Nut Part 2. The entire story of Yu-Gi-Oh! X Concoli in a Shell Nut. Part 2. So basically everything I just said already. Whoops! <laughs> no one's perfect. It's been three weeks since the battle against Air Musumi. Most of the Abyssals have joined Hat Guy in fixing what they've destroyed. Oh, how nice of them. The Abyssals that didn't join were left to their own advances. We killed them. <laughs> Let's not beat around the bush. One day after Hat Guy sent the girls on a mission to gather materials, because God forbid he did himself, he's only the most capable member of the team, he gets a report that the girls were attacked during their mission. They got better. Hat Guy runs outside to find the cause of this attack. Hat Guy finds the girls beating bodies on his doorstep. He asks who did this. They'll be fine. The sound of laughter fills the air. Hat Guy turns to face. Dun dun dun. The shadow formed. The shadow formed before, laughing at him. So you helped me to hurt me. Lovely. Hat Guy angrily asks if they caused the attack. The shadows silently remove their cloak to reveal. Angela, the girl Hat Guy defeated a long time ago, and the bitch. Bully girl from like the very beginning. Hat Guy attempts to challenge Angela to a duel, but she vanishes, mocking him. Angela leaves a note saying that she has two other helping her. Of course she does. There's always mooks. Two people that know Hat Guy very well. Steve and Bob, I dare say. Hat Guy crumples the note in anger. Grr. Hat Guy tends to the injured girls and prepares for Angela's next attack. Oh, neither scares the very least. <laughs> Several days later. The alarm goes off, signaling the abyssal attack. Hat Guy sends the girls to take care of it, because again, God forbid he do it himself. The girls spun out the abyssal was one of the ones that did not join the Rego process, you don't say. The girls beat the abyssal with relative ease. Makes you wonder what the point was, but I guess we had to bring up the fact that there is still bad things happening. The abyssal gets up confused at their surroundings. Mind control. The girls realized the episode was just being controlled by Angela, so I guess that's one of the two helpers. The girls take the information back to Hat Guy. Hat Guy, we beat up an innocent person. Well, relatively, because they're so an abyssal. The girls and Hat Guy try to get more information from the abyssal. But the abyssal can't remember any more things. That guy tells the Abyssal to remember more. I just told you I can't! The Abyssal sits there trying to remember what happened. Just then the Abyssal remembered it... It then burst into flames and exploded. Oh, Jesus. I remember- BOOM! With their service of information gone, that guy and the girls try to find other options. Thank goodness when they were so close to the explosion, I assume, nothing bad happened to them. But then again, anime logic. Not long after that, the rest of the abyssals attacked. One by one, they all attacked the girls, fought back, and freed the abyssals from Angela's control. With the abyssals freed, Angela had nothing left to throw at her at the heroes. Angela decided to take matters into her own hands. It seems like there was meant to be more here, but meh. Several days after freeing the Abyssal, Angela sends a note to Hat Guy. The note says that she's sending over the first of her helpers. It's almost like there's supposed to be a scripting of a fight scene in a sense. The Hat Guy gets Hat Guy considers sending the girls to fight Angela's helper. I mean, he's been doing it so long so far, why not again? But he reconsiders it and decides to fight on his own, realizing he hasn't been doing so anything the entire story so far. An hour passes and the helper arrives wearing a cloak just like Angela. So clearly it's not the same person. The helper removes their cloak to reveal... Nominate! No. Wisteria, the hat guy's classmate from Duel Academy. Ah, yes. Her. Totally remember her. 
That guy is shocked to see his old friend from back then. <laughs> his tooth is <laughs> a story. Wisteria challenges Hack Guy to a duel. Hack Guy reluctantly accepts. Oh yeah, it's you from such and such a go that the audience never saw. <laughs> During the duel, Hack Guy hesitates. He is afraid of hurting Wisteria. Using her powerful ritual monsters, Wisteria puts Hack Guy on the ropes. Hack Guy tries to convince Wisteria to stop fighting for Angela, but doesn't break free of Angela's control. Angela mocks Hat Guy over the radio for being too scared to attack. You know, it's one of the original monsters, probably either Cyber Angels or Necroz. Hat Guy works with the courage to attack. This momentarily breaks Angela's control over Wisteria. Wisteria tries to surrender the duel, but Angela reveals that she attached a bomb to Wisteria. Of course. Angela tells Hat Guy she'll make Wisteria explode if she surrenders. Hat Guy becomes conflicted. He's not sure what to do. We'll beat her. It's only if she surrenders. Hat Guy is about to surrender the duel. Angela decides enough is enough and sets off the bomb. Only for nothing to happen. Angela tries to activate the bomb again. Nothing happens. Hat Guy, Wisteria, and Angela are confused. Why didn't the bomb explode? It was a dud. Suddenly, Shimikaze walked onto the scene with the disarmed bomb in her hand. Turns out the girls have disarmed the bomb during the duel. Because duds don't exist in the world of anime. <laughs> with his re resolved renewed, Hat Guy summons his ace, Star Venom Fusion Dragon. Hat Guy destroys Wisteria's ritual monster and ends the duel. Mysteria thanks Hat Guy and kisses him, of course, to the shock of the other girls nearby. You probably couldn't do the jealousy. After that, Mysteria fades away. In Mysteria's place was left a note saying that the second helper will be appearing soon. So I guess she had to like her left and right hands and then a bunch of generic mooks. Fair enough. Hat Guy and the girls prepare for the next attack. Three days later. So much later that the area got tired of explaining and hat they had to hire a new one. The second helper arrived the same way Wisteria did. Right the flip out of nowhere. The helper, the helper removed their cloak to reveal... Sora! No. I don't like you going to Kingdom Hearts. Laura, a girl that Hat Guy helped once while he was in Neo Domino. And of course, since he helped her only once, he rem Or their help while in Neo Domino, so yeah. Laura started that stared at Hat Guy and smiled evilly. She looks like she's a kindergartner. An aura of pure evil emanates off of Laura. Yeah, I've seen this girl this figure. It's one of those of death and destruction. But then she played fabled dark worlds. Hat girl si Hat Guy sighed and tells Laura he won't duel her. Because I won't be beaten by an eight-year-old and I won't beat up an eight-year-old. Laura goes silent and then starts laughing crazily. Laura declares that Hat Guy will marry her if she wins. I thought we said it was Laura, not Blair. <laughs> Hat Guy and the girls are shocked to hear that. Suddenly, Fubuki steps forward and challenges Laura herself. Laura begins to cackle, calling Fubuki weak and the like. No, oh, really, just weak and the like, you know? Fubuki begins to duel with her usual move. Pendulum summon and sending a bunch of monsters. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that tends to be how it goes. Laura is using Skull Servants and various zombie cards. At least in the Tag Force 5 Geese version of the game, I don't know that much that she used with Fable Dark World. Or maybe it was someone else. Fubuki makes quick work clearing away Laura's zombies. Easier said than done, they love coming back. Laura's about to throw a tantrum. She draws her next card. Laura brings the card she just drew. Laura declares that she'll beat Fubuki and the card hat guy gave with the card hat guy gave her. This causes some of the girls to give Hat Guy a funny look. Laura activates Dragon's Mirror, using two of her zombies together to summon Drago Necro Nether Soul Dragon. Laura's fusion monster deals massive damage to Fubuki's life points. Fubuki gets back up and tells Laura that she won't give up, naturally. 
With the with the combination of Pendulum and Xyz summoning, Fubuki calls out Odd Eyes Raging Dragon. Somewhere Jace gets really jelly. Raging Dragon annihilates Laura's field, leaving her opponent open to attack. Fubuki is about to deal the final blow. Suddenly, Hat Guy stops her. Hat Guy walks over to Laura and apologizes for everything that happened. Laura chuckles and fades away, ending the duel. With Laura gone, Angela is the last of the opponents that Hat Guy and friends must face. Hat Guy and the girls prepare for Angela's attack. The next day. This is all happening within about a few months of each other. There is a knock at the door. Hat Guy answers the door to find Angela. I hope so. It's time for the big boss. Hat Guy closes the door and opens it again. Angela's still there with a large grin on her face. <laughs> just a little baby. She won't be there anymore. Hat Guy sighs and challenges him to I'm sorry. I just love those little character moments. Good job there. <laughs> Angela starts the duo by with setting the pendulum scales. Hat Guy notices she isn't using her deck from before. Hat Guy begins this turn by fusion summoning a Metal Foes monster. Let the few viewers decide which one. Hat Guy attacks and destroys Angela's pendulum monster. Angela tells Hat Guy that by destroying her monster, the wheels have been set in motion and all that usual bad guy crap. Angela destroys her own Pendulum Zone and sets a new scale. Just assume she used Twin Twister or something like that. In a matter of minutes, Angela summons her Ace Amorphage Dragon. That's bad. Angela's Dragon walks away key at the Hat Guy's extra deck. Angela has the upper hand. She deals a great amount of damage to Hat Guy's life points. Amorphage, I'm not gonna laugh at. Hat Guy begins his turn by Pendulum summoning new monsters. Or Pendulum summon in new monsters. With a combination of monster effects, Hat Guy destroys Angela's dragon. Angela calls the mon this a minor setback using a ritual spell. Angela summons her true ace, a more factor pain, the imagination Dra Draco Drake Overlord. Hat Guy is at a disadvantage again. He starts to doubt himself. Suddenly, the girls appear and give encouraging words to Hat Guy. You can do it in all that usual malarkey. Hat Guy gains the strength to stand again. Hat Guy fusion summons his ace, Starving Venom. Fusion Dragon! Angela mocks Hat Guy, saying his fusion monsters won't work on her monster. Hat Guy counters by telling Angela he'll win with the power of his bonds. Hat Guy uses the spell Mini Guts, tributing one of his unused Pendulum monsters to make Angela's monster zero. Angela is shocked and can't believe he pulled off a miracle. It's like his protagonist or something. Hat Guy deals the final blow, vaporizing, or rather blow vaporizing Angela's ritual monster. That guy tells Angela to leave and never come back. After that, Angela is captured by the police and is never heard from again. The police did something in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe? Where the frick have you been? Hat guy and friends now live in peace. Can now live in peace. No. The end. And then the Zark stuff happens. Oh, well, this has been a fun little mini-series, I gotta say. It's just nice to re honestly, I, I make fun, but it's nice to see, you know, Hat Guy and friends in the old universe. But hey, there's apparently going to be more similar to this in the future, because there's going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh! X crossover sort of thing coming, according to Shadow Blue. So, look to that in the future. I know I will. Good job, I'm Shadow Blue, and until next time, see ya.